media opposition, you would have that straight away. But we've managed to overcome that. How did you, you overcome in... it? Well, it, it's a question of, you mentioned the internet, and the internet's become very, very important, so much so that the powers that be are thinking about um, customising it, shall we say, that uh, only certain sites are allowed to be viewed, and they're trying to structure that with um, various packages that the big ISPs, the internet service providers, um, operate, in other words, if you're not part of a, an ISP package, then um, you don't get your website viewed. They're, they're, they're going to find that difficult, but that's what they want, because it's very embarrassing that information is leaking out, and there's a differing message, and it's all very well and good controlling a population, but you, you've got to have um, a secure, um, leak-proof method of doing that. And with, with the Internet, of course, Labour can go on the television in the news and espouse various politically correct platitudes and nonsense. And people can log on 40 minutes later, we'll have a response that completely blows it out of the water. And it's, it's obviously doing them some damage. Um, did, did, did you and Mr. Griffin have a clear plan when y'all started out? Or, or have y'all been making most of this stuff up as you go along? I wouldn't say making it up as we go along. I'd say that was a little, a little unfair. I would say we've, re we've reacted and adapted. Um, we have a lot of enemies. Um, bear in mind, they were trying to put Nick in prison um, some three years ago. They tried to put him in prison twice. They secretly recorded him saying some things about the, the threat of Islam, which were 100% true, and people know that now. And they tried to lock him up, and the jury system in this country uh, wasn't having it, and they released him, and... There's all kinds of methods. We've currently got a, a government quango, the ECHR, uh, taking us to court, which um, isn't particularly uh, nice, especially financially. Um, it's costing us a lot of money. Um, all these things that are that are that are used, but we we do. We're very good at jujitsu. When people have a go at us, so to speak, they use their powers against us. We harness those powers and project them back at themselves. We play into the psyche, uh, which is what politics is all about, of, 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 of the British people. And over here, I don't know how it is in the States so much, but we have a sense of fair play. We don't like bullies. We don't like the underdog not being given a fair chance. And that is propelling us as a party to uh, previously unheard of levels of support. So much so, in fact, that Nick announced that... Um, this was at our conference the weekend, that he's going for the parliamentary seat, that's the Westminster Parliament. Embarking. Embarking, and that is looking very, very interesting indeed. What do you think the odds are he will win there? Well, the Irish bookmaker Paddy Power have slashed their odds to 3-1. to one. Um, Now, that's not such a long shot, is it? You're not talking about 100-1, to one. you're talking about 3-1. to one. And knowing what I know... Is going to be coming up in this uh, general election campaign. Um, I would say that that would be a, quite a quite a tasty wager. If you're a sporting man, Jim, you might want to uh, invest a little bit of money there. <laughs> um, I I think I read somewhere that Mr. Griffin is from rural Wales. Is that right? Nick lives in Ra Wales. He was born in London. He's he's a Londoner in effect, mm -hmm. and then he moved up to Suffolk, which is rural, and because. He has four kids. Um, he moved to a more rural area from, from London because he didn't want his kids brought up uh, being indoctrinated with multicultural propaganda. And there are still parts of Britain, quite large chunks of Britain, where you can um, get your kids schooled with a very, very good education system where they're not having um, political paedophiles, as I call them, ramming Islamo-Marxist propaganda down their throats. And so he lives within the constituency of Barking, that's near... No, no he doesn't. You don't have to live in a parliamentary constituency, you don't have to live there. It's understood that um, it's, it's a London job. I mean, if Nick gets elected, for instance, he'll have to live in London a large uh, amount of the time, but you can have people living in different parts of the country and still representing those um, constituencies. As it is with Nick... It's going to be have a far more. It's going to be a huge um, media circus around Barking, because Margaret Hodge, the incumbent MP there, is uh, not very popular at all, and um, the people there have already realised that 
if they want to get rid of Margaret Hodge, the only guy that's going to do it, or the only party that can do it with the Conservatives being relatively weak there, is um, is the BNP. Well, I'm trying to understand, y'all's demographic that y'all are going after, is it mainly working class people, or, or who is it precisely? Who who likes the BNP where, y- where you're it's, at? It's multifaceted. There's a report in the Daily Telegraph today by a black pastor who's saying that a lot of Christians, and um, you must imagine the kind of circles that he moves in, are rejecting Labour in favour of the BNP, which is interesting. Um, Middle class people, we have a terrible recession over here where the government keeps announcing it's going to get better and house prices are going to recover and and all of this, but people keep losing their jobs. Is it the same in America? Oh, yes, but the media is covering it up covering it up they don't really you know they're trying to pump it up and and there's a lot of propaganda that's going on over here but it's my general sense people are underemployed unemployed and i see no growth in basic fundamental economics i see a lot of hype um but but i don't see basics i don't see companies opening up that employ people and give them good jobs we have a lot of little tiny enterprises it's a mess. I mean, we used to have good, solid jobs. We had a strong middle class. Now, now it's becoming the super rich and the super poor. And that's exactly how it is here. Exactly how it is here. We don't make anything in this country anymore. Um, we import everything. We import everything from the Far East, and the jobs just aren't there. Um, whereas before, you could get a job basically uh, with an apprenticeship, and if you were a skilled man, if you were an engineer or a toolmaker, for instance, you could get a job and you could command a decent wage, but now those jobs aren't there. You get a lot of these um, agency jobs which pay. I mean, we have a, a basic wage here of five pound forty an hour. That's the minimum wage, but that simply isn't enough with our tax structure. And unfortunately, what's happened as well is that we've got a lot of labour coming in from Eastern Europe, um, Poland especially. And I, I don't blame them. It's not their fault. It's the government's fault for allowing this to happen. There's no concept of overtime there, and they come in and, and, and take all the jobs. And what happens is our people who have, for instance, uh, a mortgage, uh, kids, a cat and a dog and, and whatever, all the bills that they've got to pay simply can't compete because they can't make enough money at work with what jobs are left to actually survive. And it's leading to an enormous amount of problems with people. Um, we have a drink problem over here in this country. I mean, Brits have always been fond of the drink. It's well known. But you get a lot of people slipping into alcoholism because they simply have nothing to do with their time and they become despondent, they lose a sense of identity, and we've got all kinds of social problems here. It sounds like a replica over here in the States. You know, you know I heard through the Internet Mr. Griffin's appearance on Question Time, and I saw where he was criticized by some for not being prepared, and I and I saw some more criticism where they said he tried to be too friendly with his opponents rather than really sticking it to them. And this seems to me to be an inherent problem with this this sort of political campaign, and that is how much do you push, you know, the racial thing and how do you deal with it? Because people can kind of get a sense of where the spokesman's coming from, and if, you know, too much or too little... It's tough. I mean, I I, know, I recognize it's really tough, but h- how does the BNP handle the, the racial issue? Well, going, going back to your uh, analysis of Question Time, you, you may not know this, but that program is a very popular program with people. It's been going for 30 years now, and we sat there preparing for what kind of questions um, Nick should be answering if it had been in a traditional format. For instance, we had a Royal Mail strike, a postal strike, letters weren't being delivered, and we're going to talk about that. As it happened, the format of the show was changed for the first um, time in 30 years, and the first 15 minutes was just incredibly hostile towards the party and, and to Nick Griffin. And whilst Nick is, is, is good, I mean, there's no two way. He, he could destroy any two members of that panel, maybe three or four. He could cope with the panel but for the for the actual host of the um, the show and virtually the whole audience to turn upon him, it was it was simply too much. But that spectacle, as I said to you before, the sense of fair play our people have, it backfired. The, 